Hi there, I'm Matt Young, CEO of Media Mice. Today, I'm here to learn about optical biometry. Now, I'm not a cataract surgeon or trained in any ocular specialty, but I've been assured that with the help of Dr. Karadzin Mode Kamal, I'll be able to understand the basics of biometry and IOL formulas by the end of this video. And so will you. Let's break it down. Dr. Karadzin, what's biometry? Biometry literally means measurement of biological structure. In terms of the eye, ocular biometry refers to measurement of the anatomical structure of the eye that contributes to the power of the eye. These measurements help to determine the correct power of an IOL before it's implanted during cataract surgery. Therefore, the clarity and the quality of visions after operation depends largely on the positions of biometric performance. Just like any other technology in taking measurements, there are many biometers in the market that can be used to measure ocular biometry. They are not the same and they do, not, they do have their own strength and their own limitations. The good biometry for eye surgeon would be the biometry that gives a repeatable and reproducible, accurate multiple measurements in a short period of time. Right, well, it seems like it's very important for us to have an accurate measurement when performing ocular biometry. So, you know, are there any steps needed to be taken to optimize the outcomes? There are a few steps that need to be taken in order to optimize the measurement. The eye is like a camera. In order for us to have a pristine effect, we need to ensure that the surface of the lens is clear and clean. For the eye, it is important to ensure that the ocular surface is healthy. Any condition that can distort the quality of image like dryness, scratches, surface abnormalities or previous surgery can affect the biometry. Basically, anything that results in ocular surface irregularities can potentially cause inaccurate biometry. Okay, that makes sense. So step one is to assess and treat the ocular surface first and check for any other risk factors that might throw off my biometry. That's right. And once you have made sure that there are no, no other factors that could throw off your biometry, you're ready to begin taking measurement. Oh, great. So what else matters? The other thing, Matt, accuracy also plays an important role. This involves the technology used to perform the biometry. There are basically two types of technology used in biometry, the ultrasound biometry and optical biometry. Today, there are optical biometric devices that can make sure surgeons are confident enough that they are getting the most accurate measurements and the best post-operative outcomes. Specifically, the IOMaster 700 from Zeiss as an example, it can be used to measure the following parameters, the axial length, the anterior chamber depth, keratometry and total keratometry, white-to-white -white diameter, as we know as horizontal visible iris diameter in IOL Master 700. These parameters are very important because they will be used in the calculation of IOL power. The benefits of using optical biometry are that it can be done in one sitting in a relatively short period of time and less dependent on the technicians. Specifically for IOL Master 700, it is one of the optical biometers that use telecentric technology that is providing accurate and repeatable keratometry independent of the distance of the eye during the measurement. I see these different measurements and how it works. You know, it looks fairly simple to my untrained eye, but does this device have any other helpful features? Definitely, Matt, definitely. Not all optical biometers are the same. Certain optical biometer like IOL Master 700 provides imaging information that are highly useful for the surgeon. The swept source technology has enabled the surgeon to visualize the cross sections of the anterior segment and posterior segment of the eye that are involved in the patient's line of vision. I specifically like the two function in IOL Master 700, which increase my index of confidence. There are fixation check with retinal image and central topography with curvature analysis. Now we are no longer just have to trust this, the number given by the machine. Now we can actually visualize 
the area where the value come from. In real sense, it has replaced the measurement based on assumption with measurement together with visual confirmation. Well, I like that. You know, replacing assumptions with measurements, that seems pretty important. So what's next? Am I ready to begin operating or what? Not quite yet, Matt. Not quite. Just because the technology can do it, doesn't mean it should always make the final call. Surgeons should still be able to detect errors should they arise. So it is important to verify the measurements that are accurate. Just like what we learned in grade school, Matt, it is always important to double check your work, especially the consequences for a wrong answer are so high. Right, okay, so how would I detect errors? There are a few steps that we can take in order to double check the accuracy of our biometry. I personally use the SOVIP mnemonics to check the biometric reports on this. The S stands for setting. I'm looking at the setting of the machine. The O stands for orientations of the examination. V is the value given by the machine. I is the index processed by the machine. And P stands for pattern of the measurement itself. Now, any inconsistencies on any of this will definitely raise a red flag. In Iron Master 700 printout, there is a special indicator if there is any uncertainty in the measurement value. So should we be doing more than one of these measurements just in case? Oh, not necessarily, Matt. It depends. But there are many published papers that have proven the accuracy, producibility, and repeatability of optical biometer like Iron Master 700 in measuring the K reading and exit length. However, it is good that if we have another available device to confirm the finding. I personally find that it is beneficial to have different K readings from three different devices, three different technologies like reflection base, placido base, or elevation base. Discrepancies in K reading could indicate the status of ocular instability of the patient. Okay, so now I know what to look for. Can I use the device now? Almost, you're almost there yet. <laughs> no. The surgeon's ability to detect errors in biometry can help improve outcomes. However, there are a few more steps on the way to get to great outcomes. One of the important parts to select the IOL power calculation is the IOL power calculation formula. This sounds like a simple premise, but surgeons may be overwhelmed by different options available. However, eye surgeons should be familiar with at minimum a few of the IOL power calculation formulas. There are a few factors that surgeon needs to consider in choosing IOL formula. The good news is that all the latest available formula are very good and reliable in measuring all types of eyes. Example of the available formulas are Barrett Suite with the collection of Barrett's formula, Hill RBF, Olsen C, Kane formula, and EVO formula, Matt. Yeah, that's quite a list, and I can see why it might be challenging to decide which formula to use. Do you have one that you prefer in most cases? You are correct, Matt. Sometimes it becomes intimidating for some of new surgeons. But I personally use Barrett Suites, which is available in Iron Master 700 and at the APA CRS website in all my cases because it covers a wide range of ocular condition and is very reliable. I also use other formulas that are available in IOL Master 700 just to recheck and to compare my IOL calculation, especially in the atypical eye like Huggies Formula and Hoffer Q. Can that IOL master help in selecting the right IOL formula? Definitely, Matt. IOL master provide with a report that compares the results of these different IOL formulas together in one page. It makes it easier for me to make an assessment and evaluation without flipping through. Just look at one page and I'll be able to choose the IOL power. On top of that, Matt, IOL Master also provides me with the results of different parameters like K and total K. Now that we have explained biometry and shared few simple steps for grid outcomes, 
Are you ready to try for yourself? I'm ready. Let's go. All right, mate. Now, question number one. What are the most critical measurements to consider? Okay, so I'd say axial length, uh, maybe anterior chamber depth, definitely keratometry and total keratometry, and uh, how about that white-to-white -white diameter? Impressive, man. That is very impressive. You've been paying attention. Okay, question number two. What are some important features of the latest biometers like IOL 700, and how do, how do these features help? Okay, so some of the important features of the IOL Master 700 include, I'd say a fixation check, as well as central topography. Because, you know, with these features, we've replaced assumptions of other biometers with actual measurements of the IOL Master 700, right? Spot on, man. You got it right. And finally, finally, question number three. What do you learn about selecting IOL power calculation formulas? You know, the IOL master can help me select the best IOL formula, I think, and newer IOL formulas can lead to improved outcomes. Wow. Amazing, man. It looks like you've got it. How did that feel? Ah, it was simple. No, no, just kidding. I mean, <laughs> relatively simple. But uh, yeah, using the IOL master made it easy. Well, folks, I think we've all learned a little something here today, especially me. But before we go, are there any final tips in helping cataract surgeons get better outcomes for their patients, Dr. Karadzin? Definitely, Matt. I would like to emphasize again on the important few steps to be taken in performing ocular biometry. I personally use my ABC mnemonics as a checklist. A is for accuracy, to ensure the accuracy of the raw data gathered from the machines like the K-reading and the Exalang. B, for best, take the best IOL formula to use to calculate the IOL power to suit the patient's condition. And C, check, compare and choose. Check the consistency of the data, compare them with the fellow eye and then choose the IOL power that suits the patient's visual needs. Thank you, Dr. Karadzin, for that informative explanation into biometry and IOL power calculations. I quite literally couldn't have done it without you. Most welcome, man. And for more information on the IOL Master from Zeiss, head on over to their website at zeiss.com.